So, this will be an essay of my called On the Restitution of Wonders. To some, the onslaught of technology closed the gap between the metaphysical and the real, annihilating the mystery completely. Others still exploit the fact that technology is merely a category of the metaphysical, an augmentation that never fully satisfies the indivisible universe. For example, cargo cults often point to the fact how metaphysics often may serve delusion. Yet are there no delusions in the human belief systems that deceive themselves, closing down to primordial ontological forces that require not only the right approach, realization, discernment and wisdom to use them? Using the example of technology, if one component in the printed circuit is defective, it won't work, at least not in the way it should. If gravitational calculations don't fit, there are some hidden interactions. Likewise, magics and metaphysics are a delicate interplay of many factors. They won't work when they are brutalized, because so. But there must be rules which they abide, of dependent on many subtle mutually determined factors and a talented operator that fulfills the conditions and hits the right time, right mind, right heart, formula, potential, soul, influence and the power of name. Right genius of the atmosphere, astral fauna and flora, propitious dimensional calibrations, right influence, vision, work with the vision, conditions and places. There are so many difficult aspects of it that it is a breeding ground both for delusions, ignorance, naysaying, and looking in the desert for water that we seek. Then again, an electric circuit won't work without some form of powering and electricity. It requires a potent, skilled and talented operator of magic, technician of the sacred and profane with the right resources, force of soul, willpower, daimonic pneuma, ajna, correct mind, ability to receive impressions from gods and spirits from a myriad of worlds, elementals, whether hells or heavens, if we choose to call them, intelligences of planets, starry intelligences, whichever classes and ontologies there might be out there. When thusly someone says all paths are correct or they lead to divinity or all religions, beliefs, mysteriosophical, soteriological, pneumagogic rites speak about the very same thing, they are dead wrong, not even wanting to explore the difference for themselves. The only paths that actually work are those that are indeed correct. They are diverse, true, but never the same. Some multiply delusion and ignorance by delusion and ignorance. Some multiply realization and wisdom by realization and wisdom. Often we have both cases in a continuous interplay. Hence, despite burying metaphysics in the swamp of untruths, delusions, ignorance, they try for those few who can see through this bog of error and navigate continuously with discernment, steadily towards the art of proficiency in the occult, metaphysical and psychagogic arts. The art of high magic belongs to the conscious operators, the forces toil continuously, so do the gods, whether the human beings are interested in the divine streams or completely at odds with them. They walk in hidden, occulted ways to the ignorant, and they shed fragments of light of holy understanding to the cognoscenti. Everything can be fully known, perhaps fortunately, even for the knowers, for fickleness of humans tends to contempt what is familiar and familiarity breeds contempt. While the talented magicians will be humble with things familiar, exactly for these reasons, respecting them as delicate knowledge and mystery put under their trust, making an aggressive and arrogant stance only when some require such an approach. As an example, let's have spectral emissions of hydrogen and iron, assuming an analogy that spectral emissions are the hermeneutics, the richness, beliefs, realizations, possibilities, mystagogic, pneumagogic, transformative potential of a certain set of metaphysical pathways. While the elements themselves are hardwired to physical substance, the spectral emissions cover a great degree of electromagnetic range with its windows. If we can commit three errors, we don't believe in the emissions, we get the emissions wrong, or we confuse hydrogen for iron. The facts remain facts. The art of hermeneutics, interpretation, hermeneian, is about interpreting the subtle philosophies and worlds that are not factual but realized. They undergo interpretation, but interpretation itself is never finished and complete. It is the same with magic. 
without educated guesses and experiments, without knowledge and ability to discern in a critical manner, we can't incorporate its walking virtues. In such a way we are disciples of the universe, ordering chaos into beautiful order reasonably, and then incorporating this order with associated human realizations within. None of these observations, aspects, categories of the indivis indivisible whole account for the whole of it as they are merely modular categories. Yet if they are successful, that is, produce effects, they stand for approximated conventional truth. Know-how and uncommon realized experiential knowledge that we build our ziggurats of the soul within upon. How to discern as what is a realization and what is a delusion? Well, this territory is delimited by discernment, cognitive bias, direct experience, personal gnosis, and the ability to navigate in between these categories in a manner that contradicts the blindness. Ask a child, what is a lie? It will reply that it is something that is not true. What is truth to an uneducated child? Everything that is what it was taught to believe. The same goes for ignorance, charlatans, the non-educated, the unreasonable, or imbecile practitioners of magic and so-called philosophers in name only. Years of commitment and distant realization, years in experience are the best teacher. A good master is also of great value, but he won't walk the path for you, nor develop that genie, deity, diamond within. He may merely guide you, warn you, accentuate the finest points in you, amend the badatos, instruct you in the mysteries, convey knowledge. But if you are not ready to heroize your own totality using your own mind, living your own life, heart, soul, and muscles, then the teachings went to waste. The greatest master is that whose disciples surpass him in his trade, art, craft, education, and occult prowess. Yet still, a master that doesn't see a master in everyone surpassing his own garden in different areas of life is a mere buffoon with pretense, like some stiff-necked idiots I once met in front of the Masonic headquarters in Edinburgh, Scotland. They were the cocks on their own dunghill, irrelevant to everyone apart from themselves and those who consider themselves as masters. Taken out of context, they were meaningless both to gods, heavens and hells. Ilfi Hamad, Baphomet, head of a wise man, flame above the head. Put your horns on and ride that saddle of great wisdom if you are ready to embark upon seeking it. Some move as holy bats, using their inner sight to echolocate the realization and live by it. They navigate in darkness, yet find the realization by the force of their acute wisdom. Some are given all the tools to sing, and even when the eyes' veils are shed, they remain as complete utter fools. Others completely blinded, think they are on the way to liberation, yet Others, even more so, are ignorant of these things and achieve liberation in different ways, as fools, or become chained by the force of their ignorance, likewise. Thank you.